My name's Pete Woods, you're watching Hexham TV. Who are you? Hi, I'm Mike Pinkney. So I, I'm a printmaker. I also um, lecture at Northumbria University and I also work as a graphic designer. So Mike, you're based in Hexham. Tell me a little bit about your background. How did you become an a, a, a illustrator designer? So I, I lived, I grew up in concert and then I did a foundation course in art and design in Newcastle. And then following that, I um, did a degree in London and in the art school at uh, Middlesex Polytechnic, as was, Hornsey College of Art before that. So I studied graphic design and illustration in London. And then following that, I worked in a series of studios in um, Soho and down on the King's Road as a graphic designer, working in a team of um, interior designers and graphic designers on projects like we did the Science Museum Identity and Interiors and we did all the Virgin Mega Stores and Jasper Conlon shops and those kind of, it was exciting, I really loved it. I loved working in London, I loved the, uh, the buzz of it all, it was great. Um, but after a while, I think like a lot of people who live in London, we kind of felt the pull back to the North East. Well, I did, my wife's not, actually not from the North East, she's from um, Cambridge. Um, but um, we wanted to move back up to the northeast, and um, I got a job up here in a design studio in about 19, I think it was 96 or 7, and um, I came back up then. So I worked in the northeast for a few years in a design studio, then became design director in a studio, um, and I was asked to do a bit of guest lecturing at Northumbria on the design course there, which I actually really enjoyed much more than I thought I would. And eventually, um, a full-time post came up, which I applied for. So I've, I've been lecturing there as a senior lecturer in, on the graphic design degree at Northumbria for about 17 years now. Um, alongside that, I've been doing my printmaking. Um, particularly for the last four or five years, I've been doing a lot of printmaking, screen print especially, um, working in studios in Newcastle. And um, I really loved it. And um, that's why I'm here today, I think, to talk about some of those um, prints that I've been doing. So tell me a little bit about your lecturing. Tell me um, what makes a good graphic designer. Um, a good graphic designer, I think, is very observant. I think notices things that maybe other people don't notice. I think is very visually aware and stimulated by visual things. Gets excited by what's around them visually. I think just enjoys working with people. I think that's a crucial thing because you work with clients all the time and as a lecturer I work with students all the time but before that I was always in contact with people working collaboratively, working in a team. I think an ability to draw helps um, because you know a lot of graphic designers, particularly of my generation, came into graphic design not knowing what it was, wanting to be fine artists and then realising there was a world of graphic design there once we'd actually been exposed to it. So I think the ability to draw is always helpful. and. Um, yeah, I think just curiosity about the world. You get involved in all kinds of projects, which is brilliant. So I've designed work with sort of high-end fashion brands. I've worked with individuals who are setting up galleries. I've worked with um, big sort of museums. I've worked with all kinds of different clients. It's, it's the variety is really brilliant. I love that, that side of it. And what do you think, um, what sort of qualities would a good student of graphic design bring to uh, a course like the one that you lecture on? I would say the key um, qualities are probably drive, um, curiosity, drive, sort of ambition if you like, Some, someone who wants to push themselves and who wants to do well on the course. All the good students I've seen who've come off and done really good things and quite a few of them have gone on to great things, they've all had a real passion for the subject and they've all been hard working, they've all been very determined. And I think those are the common denominator. I think probably determination is probably even more important than, than talent, if you like. I think it's that, that's the, the main sort of um, differentiator for those that really succeed. And what do you see the opportunities are for young students in graphic design in the future? I mean, we've got a lot of AI mm -hmm. um, coming on stream now. And, uh, you know, some people might say, well, do we need graphic designers? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I think it's a lot of, we get that a lot at the moment from parents and from students coming in. I think none of us quite know the impact that AI is going to have, but I think we try to aim at Northumbria's, of course, at the kind of higher end design studios. Um, and I think if we keep concentrating on thinking, how you think a problem through, 
and how you make connections rather than just on the software. I think hopefully that will keep us in a good place. I think if you're going to focus on software, you're not going to win. You know, and I think already if you focus on software, you're not going to win before AI. But I think with AI especially, I think the focus on software, those courses that do focus on software are going to struggle. Um, and I always say to my students, you know, no matter how good you are on the software, you'll not be as good as the design studios you're going into because they're just experts at it. So you can't impress them with that. But what you can impress them with is how you think as an individual. And I think hopefully AI won't be able to replace the way our brains connect things and each individual connects things in different ways. And I think one of our jobs as, a, as lecturers is to try and get that student to express what it is about them that's different. And hopefully those differences will stand them in good stead when AI comes a bit more on stream and we see what the impact is. Um, so that, that's, I think, where we try and pitch ourselves. So we're trying to focus on what's inside the individual rather than the ability to use software. I think that hopefully that will stand us in good stead. So tell me, um, why did you suddenly start to focus on the printmaking side of things more recently? Um, interestingly, my, my, I'd done printmaking when I was younger. I'd done quite a lot of screen print and etching and whatnot. And I'd sort of drifted away from that because I was busy doing other things. And um, my son decided to do a printmaking introductory course on a studio in Newcastle. And I thought, oh, that sounds, I should, I should get back into that. So I went along with him to the studio in Newcastle um, about four or five years ago. And um, I loved it. I forgot how much I'd loved it. And I loved the physicality of it. Um, because I think we spend so much time in front of screens and I think the physicality really appealed to me because it, it, and the, the serendipitous nature of it, if that's a word, um, trying to make things happen and then things happen that you didn't expect, the way you mix the inks, the way the, the inks work together, just all those things. I, I loved that. It wasn't quite as predictable as, as you might think it might be. So I enjoyed that. I also enjoyed the, the, the slowness of the process. It's quite a, there's lots of elements to the process. So I, I got back into so I got back into that sort of slightly more um, a slightly slow way of working. Enjoyed that, and then I've been doing it ever since for the last four or five years. I've been doing quite a lot of it and uh, enjoying it, and I'm starting to sell my work as well, which is great. It's nice to nice to be a part of the gallery scene in Newcastle, and um, just meet a different um, group of people as well because the printmaking community is a community in itself. So I've enjoyed, uh, yeah, it's a different, it's another thing which I've just enjoyed getting into. And how did you establish your style in printmaking? Um, yeah, it's a good question. For, for lots of years, I'd been drawing and in my spare time, drawing and trying different techniques and never feeling totally satisfied. I mean, one thing, I was always quite good from being a little kid at drawing things to look like things and impressing me mum and dad with how I could draw a tiger or a blue tit or whatever. So I've always, I've always been quite good at that, but I've never felt had a distinct way of doing it. And then I, I was coming out of the Wentworth, many times I've come out of the Wentworth, I've been involved in coaching and whatnot in the triathlon club down there for many years. I'd always come out of the Wentworth and see the light on the, the houses and the, 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 the town. I think it's quite a unique, sort of the town's on a hill, and I think that's got a unique perspective to it. I kept thinking I've got to capture that. One day I've got to draw that. And then one day I saw it with snow on the roofs, with strong shadows, I think it was it was um, early morning, I think, or late afternoon, I can't remember. I thought, right, I'm going to do that. So I, I went home and started drawing that scene. And um, I tried it lots of different ways, drew it in lots of different ways. And finally got it down to three colours, what I thought might work, and then tried lots of different colours. And I, I printed it in, in what you might think were more traditional colours. It didn't work so well. I tried it in traditional colours. It, it, it still was a bit flat. So I just tried something completely different. Tried these quite sort of out there colours and it just worked. And I thought, right, okay. So that, that it was just the, the choice of colour and the, the use of the sort of the, the strong sort of silhouettes of things all clicked. So I thought that actually works. I'm really happy with that. So I've tried that on a few of the prints and it all it seemed to to work you know I just kind of found my rhythm really so I've learned that if it, it's something about sorry the gut instinct you know it's, it's what what something you spot which you really like whether it's the shapes the, the, the shadows the patterns something that connects with you if you spot that then then 
go for that and then try to make it work in the way now I try to make it work in that style. And I think, I think it seems to be, you know, I, I'm enjoying it anyway, and I think it seems to be consistent, which is great. So do you have to um, love a subject or have some emotional connection with a subject to actually um, produce something that you think is worthwhile? Do you think it's sort of, um, you know, the start of the process is the emotional connection like you saw, saw Hexham silhouetted sort of thing. Yeah. Um, is, that, is, that, is that what inspires you? It's certainly what inspires me. I don't think you necessarily have to have that to, have a, to make a good picture. But it's certainly been the case for me, and I think in all the pictures I've done that, that I've got some sort of connection with them. I'm not necessarily will in the future, I don't suppose, but um, everything I've done so far, I've, I've either walked past lots of times and know something about the building because I'm I quite like the architecture of different places. So when I did the print of the forum, I did that because there's not many Art Deco buildings in Hexham, and I kept noticing it. And there's quite a lot of visual stuff around there, but I thought I'll, one day I'll isolate that and have a go at doing that because um, I just I think it's a nice building, and I've got a lot of nice connections with it as well because I've been going there for 20 odd years. You know, I love it. Um, but uh, so I so I think it's sometimes it's just that link with myself. So I think all the things I've I've seen, I've either been walking past and spotted it, or I've been there many times and and I'm familiar with it and want to try and capture it in some way. Um, but I think you could probably do a scene without that. Um, but there are certain ingredients I think you need. I think certain you know I think you need an emo some sort of reaction to it, a gut reaction to it. I think is important whether that be familiar or not. If something you look at. I did one picture actually which I wasn't familiar with at all, which was a, a seawall in Galloway, which has sold quite a few prints in the Biscuit Factory in Newcastle. I've never been before and I've never been since, but the sunlight on that wall was just beautiful, so I thought, right, I'll get that. And, and I've, so I, I wouldn't say I had an emotional connection with that. That's probably the one that I've done which I haven't had that, but it worked well and just because of the composition. So I don't think you have to have that emotional connection, but. Most of mine have, certainly the one in Hexham, ones in Hexham have, and the ones on the northeast coast really have as well, because we spend a lot of time up there. Okay, so this is um, my print, which I call Hexham Snowy Night, and I mentioned it previously in, uh, when I was chatting earlier, and this, was, uh, this is, shows you the scale of the, the prints that I do. And the bigger you go on screen print, the harder it is. So sometimes it's a bit nerve wracking when you're printing them because you're never quite sure how it's going to work. And when the inks are mixed, you've obviously got to print each layer one at a time. And when you print the first one, you're thinking, is that colour right? When you print the second one, still not sure. It's only when you put the last layer on that suddenly it all comes together as a print. And uh, that's part of the excitement of printmaking because you never quite know how it's going to come out. And there's always little problems along the way you've got to solve. But um, so this scene is a scene which I, um, I've always loved, that sort of aspect of Hexham, the way it rises up on the hill. And if you're kind of really fanciful, you'd say it looks a little bit like a kind of Italian village on a hill. It's got that sort of feel to it. Um, so I've, I've always liked it and I thought, I saw it with, that, with the sunlight as I mentioned and the, and the shadows and thought I've got to capture that one day. So I've, I've got it from sort of round about the Wentworth car park area um, and I've drawn it several times from several different angles, doing a bit of judicious cropping and, and simplifying and trying to make it um, look the way I wanted it to and using a, a set of slightly unusual colours. But the key thing for me was capturing the, the snow and the shadows. I think those two things sort of hold it together and it shows some of the beautiful buildings in, in Hexham. So that's the, the first one I wanted to show you. Um, um, the next view I've done, and apologies for the colours, because I think the colours on the camera may be slightly different to, to the ones when the actual print itself, but this is a, a view of the Abbey in Shadow. And this was, again, a view I've, I've noticed lots of times, and it's such a beautiful building, and we're so fortunate in Hexham to have this in the heart of the town. And it, you'll probably notice I'm, I'm actually, from the viewpoint I've drawn it, it's actually impossible to get this shot unless you've got a drone. So I've actually drawn it from slightly elevated off the ground, and, and I really like the strong shadow and the dynamic sort of feel. It's quite a, 
when I was doing it, I was thinking it's a lot of blank space in the in the image. Is it going to work? But actually, when I did it, um, I was really pleased with with that aspect of it, and just getting the shadow with a little the, the doorway. And obviously, as you can see, if you know the the scene well, it's um, it is a bit simplified. But I think to to it was important to to try and capture the essence of it rather than the, the exact detail. So that's that one. Um, Um, this is a print I've done recently for um, the Forum in Hexham as a partnership with them to help sort of raise some funds for them. And, and it's been, I think, been sold for the last couple of weeks and they've sold a lot, so that's great. And I really loved the Art Deco facade of, of the cinema. I've, I've been going to the cinema for 20 odd years myself with my family and, and really enjoyed going there. And particularly after COVID, I remember sitting in there, I think it was the James Bond film after COVID, and just looking around with every, seeing everybody and thinking, this is brilliant. I really love being back here with the community and back with the people. And um, it just was really significant for me. And I thought, if I can do something to help raise a little bit of money for the cinema, great. So hopefully this is going to do well over the next sort of year or so. Um, but again, it's, it's a, this is a two colour print and it creates a third colour, which is the darker colour where the two colours overlap which again presents quite an interesting little um, problem because you've got to try and um, imagine where the two colors are going to overlap and how that will make the shadows. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a two color print and I just used the white of the facade to uh, help the, the forum pop a little bit. And then the last image I've got is one I've just done very recently um, of um, a scene which everybody in Hexham will know, which is the sledging on the, on the seal. And this, is, this has taken me a long time to do. It doesn't look, it's quite a small little print, but I've been looking at this and redrawing it since last Christmas because I was walking around last Christmas. My kids have left home now and um, gone to university and, and left, so I, they don't go sledging there anymore. But I've sledged there quite a lot myself and um, I've always loved it. When the snow comes, we head down to the, the seal and I was walking around there watching everybody last year and thought, I must do an image of that. It's just such an iconic event in the life of Hexham. So I did it initially from the other side. I drew it from the side of the, the um, play area and the abbey looking the other way. And I didn't think that was working. Um, so I drew it again from the sort of seal hill, from the, the steps on the other side of the seal hill and it started working better. They had to insert this sort of shadow towards the bottom, which held it together a little bit, and then simplified the, the sort of fields and the, the buildings behind to try and hold that together and help them drop into the background a little, and then try to draw people without making them too detailed, um, and then uh, just try to make it all work, but it took a lot of time to get it right. Anyway, I printed it a couple of weeks ago, and it's proved quite popular, which is great. I think because it just chimes with a lot of people. A lot of people have, have been there and done it. So um, I've, I've made it into a card, which um, is being sold in Hexham at the moment. Um, so yeah, they're the prints I've done of Hexham so far. What's next, Mike? Um, well, I've got four in the pipeline, but they're all of um, Newcastle and the coast at the moment. So I'm doing four um, bigger ones out there. But I've got two or three others of Hexham, which I, I like. There's, again, some iconic, just we all know, there's Tyne Green. There's, I'd love to do one of Bonfire Night at some point, because um, that's another big moment, but um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how I'd do it. But I, I would love to do one like that. But there's so much material around, and it's just, um, you know, certain things I, I notice when I'm walking around certain buildings I really like. I love to see there's so much getting done up in Hexham at the moment. It's really nice to see. We're fortunate to have so many beautiful buildings in the place. Um, but yeah, I've got four at the moment of Newcastle and the coast, which I'm doing, which I'll, I, I sell in um, the Biscuit Factory, the, the original prints, and um, in Haslam's, actually, in Hexham. And uh, I'll be doing those first, and then we'll see after that, if I've got time. <laughs> Mike, thanks very much for talking to Hexham TV. That's all right, thank you very much.